Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs>
over the last few years that the, the guys that the Saints go into the season with don't always end the season. And uh, you want to make sure that you're prepared and you want to get as many bodies as you can in there, rather it's to compete, to try to elevate some guys, try to push some guys, or you want to bring somebody in that you know for a fact is extremely talented and that can bring a little bit of that swag to the New Orleans Saints. And we talked a little bit about Keon Coleman. We did an episode about Keon, young Keon uh, from Opelousas out here, uh, you know, in Louisiana. Um, he went to Michigan State. I don't know why the hell I said uh, South Carolina the other day. But he went to Michigan State, uh, and also he transferred from Michigan State to Florida State, and he had that monster season. Uh, a lot of people are very low on Keon Coleman now because he ran a 4 6 To me, that's not a deal breaker. It's about can you play the game of football? Um, I, I never seen a guy with a 4-2, 4-3 going to the Hall of Fame. Now, Tyreek Hill, uh, for you know, is going to change that, but you don't really see that often, which I, I don't understand like why people buy so much into these 4-2, 4-3, 40s because that don't always equate to success. I've seen John Ross uh, still, uh, you know, he had that combine record before it was broken by, I want to say Xavier Wordy, if I'm not mistaken, out of Texas. And, you know, he had that for years, but John Ross couldn't see the field. I mean, he couldn't see the field with binoculars. He couldn't see the field if he was standing on it. So all, all those things about, oh, you need to run a 4-2, you need to run a 4-3, man, miss me with that, all right? And give me somebody that's talented. Give me somebody with a really good catch radius. Give me a dog. Roo, roo. Give me a dog. That's what I need. I don't need no guppies. I don't need no puppies, all right? So if you can go out there and you got that dog mentality, I don't care if you're running a 4-6 or not. And Keon Coleman, from what I've seen, is a dog. I've seen him make some incredible catches. I've seen him have that dog-like mentality. I've seen him bring something to the table that I feel like the New Orleans Saints have not had in quite a while. And you know what I'm saying? And I feel like if they were to bring him in, I think that it would be a good look. But I, I would be... I, I'm going to be honest, I'll be a little bit biased, you know, being a, you know, a Louisiana guy myself, a native of New Orleans, for those that don't know, Night War stand up. I'm a little biased, you know, when it comes to Louisiana guys. Uh, this is a, a, a very talented kid, and uh, I, I know that he will bring something to the team. But uh, for the sake of this, this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the routes that the Saints can go. No pun intended. <laughs> but... You know, we can look at wide receiver and we can look at tight end because if you notice, uh, if you didn't fall asleep, Dennis Allen said that he's not just talking about wide receivers. So that only leads a tight end because I, I think I would literally, I, I, I look, I, I don't think I ever did this, but I would literally shut down the, the podcast and go and go to sleep if on draft night, with the 14th pick, the same draft of running back. I would, I, I think I might wrap up the cords and, and put them in my closet, man. But I know he's not talking about pass catching when it comes to the running back position because you got Kendra Miller, you got AK, you got Jamal Williams, you got Taysom that can run the ball and catch it at the same time. But I don't even want to believe that's the case, all right? So we're going to be focused on focusing on wide receivers and tight ends, all right? So... I'm going to go ahead and share this screen. And uh, right now, this is going to be courtesy of NFL Draft Buzz. Shouts out to NFL Draft Buzz. They do an amazing job. And I had an opportunity to meet a couple guys that are actually, uh, you know, that that I guess they they started this whole um, this whole website. And uh, they're some really cool guys. So shouts out to them. They do a really good job over there. I'm going to go ahead and share that so we can kind of go over these things together. We're going to take a look at some of the wide receivers now. I'm pretty sure a lot of you already seen the pro day from LSU. Uh, we, uh, Brian Thomas, uh, you know, just blew everybody away. Everybody was talking about, you know, him uh, running at 4-3 and how well uh, he looked during his pro day, which that's not a surprise to me because the guy is about as talented as as, it, as you can possibly be uh, at that particular position. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, put this up on the screen and going to share it. Uh, this right here, once again, courtesy of DraftBuzz.com. You can go and check out their website, uh, you know, at your uh, earliest convenience. But we're going to take a look at some of the wide receivers. And as y'all can see on the screen right here, uh, you know, you got Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, th that's pretty obvious there. 
uh, he, he is the consensus number one wide receiver that more than likely is going to be taken off the board. This guy didn't go to the combine. This guy did no pro day. He didn't run a 40. He didn't do nothing, right? He said, watch the tape. <laughs> Man said, watch the tape. It went home. <laughs> said, I'm stunned like my daddy. So Marvin Harrison is the number one wide receiver. And then, of course, you got LSU's own Malik Neighbors uh, is the, also the, the second-ranked wide receiver, which we know how talented Malik Neighbors is. And then uh, we got uh, Rome Adunze, uh, Adunze. Uh, out of uh, the University of Washington, uh, Adunze, excuse me. And um, three talented guys right there, three talented guys, all guys that the Slains don't have a chance of sniffing, all right, unless they're about to really move and shake and get into the top 10, which for that, you better be going quarterback. You better, I better hear the New Orleans Saints select Jaden Daniels. If you rolling out of, out of number 14 spot, to the top 10, you bet, I better hear a quarterback or, you know, I better hear like a top offensive line like Joe Alt name come off, okay? But anyway, um, you got Marvin Harris. You got Malik Neighbors. You got a Dunze. You got Brian Thomas Jr., right? Uh, you got a Donnie Mitchell, Troy Franklin, Lad McConkey, who is high on a lot of people's board. Uh, uh, basically a dream come true for a coach like Bill Belichick. Definitely would be a Patriot. Uh, Xavier Leggett out of uh, South Carolina, very talented uh, wide receiver. Got Keon Coleman. And we're going to stop right there, okay? Um, you got oh, – okay, I, I'll finish reading up since they got 12. You got Roman Wilson, got Xavier Worthy, and uh, you got Jermaine Burton out of the University of Alabama there. So a lot of talented wide receivers right there. But – if, if I'm the New Orleans Saints, okay, if I, I am the New Orleans Saints, if I'm talking about uh, picking, I'm talking about dra drafting guys, I'm looking at a wide receiver in the later rounds. Two, maybe round five or something like that, because this is a deep draft. This is a deep draft at the wide receiver position. And you can get some really talented guys in some of those later rounds. So if you want to look at a wide receiver who I feel like would be there right around the later rounds probably uh keon coleman because people fell off uh he ran at four six so he'll probably be there for you in the second round if you decide to do that because we know that he, he's probably going to drop unless somebody is really in love with him and no matter what he did at the combine it wasn't a deal breaker for them but then you know if, if you're talking about some of the later rounds as, as you can see we can stroll down here as we take this this clip off screen you, you still got some really talented guys like Malik Washington out of the uh, University of Virginia. I like him, man. I think that dude is talented, very underrated, probably can help you in a special teams game a little bit. Uh, you know, you got uh, Breeden Rice, uh, the son of Jerry Rice. Uh, he had a really good, respectable career at USC. Uh, you got Johnny Wilson, the big six foot six, big tall catch radius type guy. Uh, you know, he, he made some really tough contested catches at Florida State. A lot of the attention was given on Keon Coleman. But Johnny Wilson, I mean, he is physically imposing. Anybody ever seen this dude up close? The guy, is, you know, he, he's a skyscraper here. So probably one of those guys that, to me, is probably going to end up being a tight end, right? He's probably going to end up being a tight end. You think about his frame and his size. He's 231 right now. You probably get gain about 10 more pounds. He'll probably be a really good tight end in the league, catch a lot of passes here. Then you got a Jamari Thrash out of Louisville. Uh, and, you know, you got a few more guys there. I I'm looking at some of the, you know, the later round wide receivers because you got to look at the fact, you got to think about the fact that the Saints have four fifth round draft picks. So one of these, these players can probably end up being a wide receiver. And that would be pretty cool, right? You know, if the Saints can get a very talented wide, wide receiver and with one of their fifth round picks that can actually contribute to the team. And it's not out of the realm of possibility. We've seen wide receivers who who play at a high level. We see them, you know, like, you know, come in some of those later rounds. They're not always first and second round picks. So if the Saints can can find that diamond in a rough, if they don't want to use their first or their second round pick, that would that would be huge for the New Orleans Saints. That would that would be absolutely huge. So 
those are a few of the uh, pass catching uh, wide receivers out there. You know, well, if you're a wide receiver, you catch passes anyway. But you get what I'm saying. Those are some of the wide receivers that are are going to be on the clock really, really soon. You know what I'm saying? To be able to select by a team. But to me, looking at number 14, looking at that spot, based on what you know about Ryan Ramchek, based on the fact that you don't have a true left tackle, I don't see why you would be looking at any other position besides offensive linemen. Like you, like the cover is bare right there. It is absolutely bare. I mean, you got James Hurst on your team. You got Nick Saldaveri on your team. You got Trevor Penning. Uh, you just signed Ali Udo. And you got Eric McCoy, Ryan Ramchek, who, whose season is in jeopardy right now. And you got Cesar Ruiz. So, you definitely got to fix this offensive line issue. If not, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And I understand that we like the sexy picks, right? We love the sexy picks, man. And I, look, ain't nothing greater than drafting a wide receiver that you know for a fact that you can actually see catch one hand snags and wow you or a running back that can make somebody miss. That is absolutely amazing. A cornerback that can shut down the field, a linebacker that can get sacks and tackles. But if you don't have an offensive line, you ain't going nowhere offensively. If your quarterback doesn't have time to throw the football, if your running back doesn't have the opportunity to find lanes because your offensive line is opening up creases for him to run through, you ain't winning jack. And I don't care who on your team. You can have Jerry Rice on one side, T.O. on the other, Chad Ochocinco and Steve Smith Sr. in the slot, and you can have, I don't know, uh, Gronk on one side and and uh, Travis Kelsey on the other. If you don't have an offensive line, you ain't winning jack. It's just that simple. So the Saints going to have to fix this offensive line. But I ain't mad at them about the whole pass catcher thing. I just think that's something that they need to address in the second round. And hopefully they feel the same way that I do. I, I would hope. Because drafting anything else other than the offensive lineman, uh, at this point, uh, I, I think that would be negligence <laughs> on the part of the New Orleans Saints. unless. They drafting a quarterback unless they drafting a quarterback that is going to be the future of this franchise. That is the only way at this point I feel like anybody would or should forgive them. I, I like, look, I understand about Brock, Brock Bowers is out there because we're going to talk about tight ends in just a minute. But if they were to give, let me, let me say this, let me say this, let me back up. Let me back up. If they were to draft Brock Bowers, I would not be upset. But I still feel like it would be a little bit irresponsible. I know that may not be popular, this uh, a popular uh, statement or a popular take, but you got to fix this offensive line. You got to fix this offensive line. Anything else to me would be a little bit of a luxury pick. You need offensive line help. I mean, unless Nick Sell, Nick Sell, the very in Trevor Penning just went to the Larry Allen school of offensive tackles. Unless that happened, you know, like you need some help. <laughs> like, you need some help. You know, Nick Saldaveri is a guard, but if they went to the Larry Allen school of offensive linemen or, you know, like one of them great Jonathan Ogden or something like that school of offensive linemen, unless they, unless Jonathan Ogden's talent was zapped out of him and put inside those guys, you need to go offensive line. You need to go offensive line. Just that simple. But let's go ahead and read some of your comments, and then we'll talk a little bit about the tight end position. TJ, you know me long enough to know that I get angry when the Saints do something stupid. Well, look, I think we all get upset, Jerry, when the Saints do something stupid, which that means that we get upset quite often these days. But, of course, man, we look, we hope that they make the, the right decisions. I think all the frustration of the Who That Nation would be absolved and go away if this team just start winning and and reaching a potential that we know that it can reach right I, I don't i don't think anybody wakes up in the morning ready to be upset with the saints you know but you got to give them something to, to be positive about uh malik washington pure slot very smart uh on and off the field uh led uh three uh let me see i guess he led the country in catches uh great yards after the catch Almost double Keon uh, contested catch percentage. 
Yeah, I mean, Malik Washington is – man, that, that guy is talented. Like, that, that guy is, like, super talented. And I, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that you uh you mentioned him because, I mean, I talked about him. I, I think he's extremely uh, un, underrated. You know, we, we talk a little bit about him. I think a lot of people aren't really paying that much attention to him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's the fact that, you know, of, of his size. But he you know, he ran a 4-440. Four, four uh, and like you said, man, he makes really smart decisions. Now, he definitely going to be able to help you in the, in the special teams game. Very, very uh, smooth uh, route runner. Still needs a little bit of work, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do feel like sometimes uh, he can get a little bit lost in translation. But, I mean, I think that's something that he can work on. But it, it's, it's something that's that that is that is you definitely can uh, build on. But I, I would definitely start him off on special teams, especially like if you were to bring, you know, move Rashid Shahid and have him like working with the wide receivers and want to take take him away from that whole special teams thing. Even though he was all pro, I get it. But uh, if you if you have uh, an objective or a goal for Rashid Shahid to be one of your top receivers, I, I think you need to move him from that position. And maybe add him to the to the wide receiver room, which I feel like the New Orleans Saints should do. But hey, who am I? Uh Anaya Smith went to Texas AM. Allen and Kubiak have ties there. Special team slot very tough too. Yeah, I, I seen a few of his games, man. Um, and I watched a little bit of his film as well. I mean, another very talented guy. A little raw too. A little raw too with the wide, you know. I, I seen a look, I, I watch games where they where they look really well, and I watch some of the games that they lose. And uh, some of the times where I've seen them actually play, uh, there were some times where, you know, he he kind of struggled a little bit getting off the line. But he, had, he has, like, really good, you know, really good feet. Uh, sometimes, you know, like I said, those those young guys, you know, like, man, when you're so talented, when you're talented, sometimes you can blow past people and a lot of the things, the little fundamental things, you can you can possibly lack because you don't really need that, but uh, I just think that it, he, he's still like a. I, I can still see him in a starting rotation, you know, like right off the bat. I think he, you know, I think he'll, you know, be a, a, a valuable asset to any team. But I think it may be like maybe two years or something like that where you, if he was going to a team that's struggling, need a wide receiver, it'd probably be about two or three years before you know they would like appoint him as a number two or if the light, if the light really comes on, it'd be a number one. So there you go. It says, uh, we seen undrafted free agents come in and make the team. Exactly. Yeah. Like I think a lot of people, we, we, we feel like if a guy is worth it, you know what I'm saying? A worthy, he has to be drafted, but that ain't always the case. And, and we see that all the time with guys that just come in, make, make huge ways. Don't get drafted, but end up like being really, really good for the football team, right? Remember Miles Austin for the Dallas Cowboys? Remember uh, Victor Cruz? You know, like, man, these guys just came out of nowhere and they made some noise, you know? But, you know, you 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 can be a very, very talented guy, even though I got to make sure that I, I, I take a look at this because I want to make sure that I'm, I'm saying this correctly. I want to make sure that the guys that I mentioned – were indeed not drafted uh but let me see okay so victor cruz was not drafted like he was a guy that basically just came out of nowhere and uh and, and made some noise all right so it says uh J jc latham at 14 yeah that would be a that would be a really good pick for the new orleans saints too that would be a huge pick uh for the new orleans saints to get jc latham one of the top offensive linemen uh in this year's draft um but, it, it, you know, I feel like Latham is probably going to be gone if the Saints, uh, you know, decide to kind of hold on to that number 14 pick. I, I do not see him out there. But, I mean, I can I can show, uh, show you in a minute, you know, who is available. And, uh, of course, you know, there, there's some guys that the Saints are, are being linked to when it comes to the offensive linemen. Uh, like I said, Joe Alt uh, is, is – the top offensive lineman uh, for Shanu out of Penn State. Finally got his name right. J.C. Latham uh, is uh, another guy, you know, that is uh, is very high, like you just mentioned. Uh, Fuaga out of Oregon State. 
Uh, you got uh, Fotanu uh, out of uh, Washington. Uh, you got Mims out of Georgia. Uh, Tyler Guyton, who I, I'm very high on. Uh, he's an extremely athletic offensive lineman. So that's why I feel like the Saints are lacking, in, in my opinion. You know, that, at, that athleticism at the left tackle position, something that hasn't been here since, you know, there I say uh, Teron Armstead has been there. So there you go. I mean, you but you need that offensive line help. Uh, aren't the Saints switching to a zone running scheme? Well, that's what it looks like. That's that's what it seems like, uh, Evan. You know, of course, uh, Clint Kubiak is a disciple of uh, Kyle Shanahan, and that's what they do out there in San Francisco. So I'm pretty sure that they're going to switch to that. And uh, that's why I say, you know, a guy like Tyler Guyton, I feel like is exactly what they would need uh, for the New Orleans Saints, you know, because of his athleticism on the offensive line. Uh, let's see, uh, rise up, TJ, rise up, Jerry G, uh, says Archangel, who's a Falcon fan, but, you know, shots out to him. Archangel has been here for a very long time. Uh, much, much respect to him, you know, for being here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Lance Moore, yeah, Lance Moore, yeah, Priest Holmes, yeah. Uh, still would uh, take Leggett over Coleman, but that's just me. I mean, look, there's no right or wrong about this, Calvin, you know, and I only use Keon because we actually did a show on him. But if Xavier uh, Leggett is available, I can understand why you want to go after him. I mean, he's a really, really good kid. Uh, you're, you won't have any character issues when it comes to that. He's a hard worker. Everybody sings his praises. And uh, he, he's a go-to guy. And uh, he, he's not going to be a guy that, if you say he's the number two receiver, he's not going to take that lightly. He's going to be coming after Chris Olave. And there's going to be times if if – what he showed at South Carolina is any indication of what he's doing to pros. You probably going to be mentioning his name before you mention Chris Olave based on his work ethic and the way that he approaches the game. But yeah, I, I agree. Like he's a talented, talented player. Uh, we move Andrews P from left tackle to right tackle to guard back to left tackle Ram from left tackle in college tackle to right tackle. Why are we hell bent on keeping pinning at left tackle? Well, I think that's the reason why tragic is that's the reason the Saints drafted him. They drafted him to be the succession plan for Teron Armstead, right? Teron Armstead moves on to Miami, and they thought that Trevor Penny would be the guy. And um, it hasn't panned out, but I'm, I'm not ready to give up and wash my hands with Trevor Penny. You know, if, if maybe right tackle, I mean, right tackle or left tackle is just not him. Maybe he will fit at the guard position maybe sliding him to the inside will make him be respectable and, and salvageable but uh, i just think that going at him and you know i mean making him a left tackle teams are going to be going at him i i don't like that matchup so they're gonna have to figure it out man i mean he was a first round pick so you want to figure out some type of plan for him you don't want to say that you made a mistake, even though they're trying to pretend or try to make it seem like they haven't. Oh, we it's more like a red shirt year. Like, come on, man. Let, let's just be honest about this. How many, how many left tackles, people, you know, right tackles, guards that you see get drafted in the first round and teams talking about, oh, yeah, we're going to draft them. This is a red shirt year. Like, I, mean, I don't know who they think buying that, but I, I sure as hell ain't selling. I mean, I sure as hell ain't buying it. I ain't buying what they selling. Like, it, it was a mistake. You know, it was a mistake at this particular point. Not to say that it ain't salvageable, but the idea of Trevor Penning and what you had did not pan out. So anything else is basically you just going back to the drawing board and trying to figure out a, a way to try to finesse everybody to believe that, oh, we knew it all along. Nah, bro. Y'all didn't know anything. Y'all y'all wanted this man to be left tackle, and it has not panned out yet. Even though, like I said, I got a lot of confidence in the kid. I, I Look, I understand that coming from a small school like Northern Iowa, going to the NFL is a little bit of a culture shock, and it's a little bit of a learning curve. But, you know, don't pee in the air and tell me it's raining. You know, don't, don't talk about, oh, it's being a red shirt year. I've seen offensive linemen come from schools smaller, and play, like, can can I interest you in Jari Evans, right? Where did Jari Evans go to the Bloomberg? Can somebody tell me where Bloomberg is? I know it's somewhere in Pennsylvania, but I ain't never been, I ain't never been there. I don't know Bloomberg from Bloatsburg. 
For those that don't know what Bloesburg is, watch Doug on Nickelodeon. But I don't know. But Jari Evans turned out to be a pretty damn good uh, offensive lineman. So miss me with that whole red shirt thing. We ain't in college no more. It just just has not panned out with Trevor Penning. So you're going to have to figure out how you can make that thing work. But let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and move on. Talk a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and put up on the screen as we uh, move on to the tight end position. Now, once again, Dennis Allen uh, said that they're looking for pass catchers and it's not necessarily a wide receiver. So, of course, we got to take a look at uh, tight ends as well. As I put it up on the screen, uh, get that out of the way. All right, so the number one ranked tight end is no surprise at all. Uh, you got Brock Bowers. And then you got Jatavian uh, Sanders out of the University of Texas. Cade Stover out of Ohio State, who is really, really good. And we know that the Saints love themselves, some Ohio State players. So I just mentioned Brock Bowers, Jatavian Sanders, and Cade Stover uh, as your one, two, and three. Then you got Theo Johnson. <laughs> then you got Ben Sanat, uh out of Kansas State. I used to love Kansas State growing up. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Like, back in, like, the late 90s, like, when they had Michael Bishop as their quarterback, when they was the number one team in the country, when the first go-round with Coach Bill Snyder. I, I used to I, mean, I used to love Kansas State, man, and watching Darren Sproles, man, when Darren Sproles, like, won the Big 12 championship by itself against Oklahoma. Man, look that up. Go Look up, like, before when we leave here, look up Darren Sproles versus Oklahoma Big 12 championship. That man took over that game. They had no answer for him. But anyway, uh, we got uh we got what Dalen uh Hook, what was that Hoker? Hoker out of uh Colorado State. Uh, and you got Jaheen Bell out of Florida State, AJ Barner out of uh Michigan, the national champions. Uh you got Tip, not T.I. Tip. <laughs> Tip Raymond out of Indiana, I mean Illinois. Uh, you got Eric All out of Iowa. But you can't go wrong with an Iowa tight end. I mean, if they got if they if they got Iowa and tight end, I think you you can't lose with that. Uh, Jared Wiley out of TCU, and then uh, you know you got Tanner uh, out there from uh, Arizona. So uh, those are your uh, top twelve tight ends. Um, not a lot of Saints fans want the New Orleans Saints to go after Brock Bowers. Understandably so, but we know that Brock Bowers is going to be a top 10, top 15 pick in this year's draft. Now, the only reason why the Saints could even get close to Brock Bowers if they draft him at number 14. Now, I just I just got to ask the chat. I got I got to ask the chat. Based on everything that the Saints need right now, would you want the Saints to draft Brock Bowers? over anything else what would be your number one priority it's just in the chat i mean i ain't saying like put it you ain't gotta put a name just put a position in there or yes or no like would you like do you feel based on what you know the issues with ryan ramchick the no true left tackle if the same draft brock bowers how you feeling would you have an issue with it is the question for me is the question that i have for you but like I said, Brock Bowers going to be a top 15 pick. So if you don't get Brock Bowers in, a, in you know, with number 14, you're not getting him. Not getting him. So that leads the second round or one of your fifth round picks. So hypothetically, based on what I saw, based on what I see, all right, I don't feel like the Saints are going to be able to get their hands on Brock Bowers based on the knees. Like, I feel like they're going to go offensive line. Could be wrong, but if it's me, I'm going offensive line based on everything that's going on. So, you know, you, you got Sanders. Sanders is not going to be there. Brock Bowers definitely is not going to be there. So what, who's that lead? Who's that lead? I mean, you, if you don't get a, a tight end or a wide receiver – in the first and second round, then you have to wait till at least the fifth round, right? So you don't have a third or fourth round pick, and you got a bunch of fifth round picks. So K. Stover would be off the table because he is more than likely going to be a late second round, early third round pick, probably even earlier than that because he's, he's climbing up the draft boards based on the pro day that they had out there in Ohio State. So he's climbing up the draft boards on that. So you're not going to get him. So the top three 
are out of there. So who's that lead? Who's that lead for them? Um, well, if you take a look, one one guy that stands out to me, and I'm going to go ahead and put it up, up on the screen, is this guy. And that's Jaheim Bell. Now, he's out of Florida State, just like uh, Keon Coleman is. And I don't know if you've ever seen this dude play, but he is an absolute dog. He has that dog mentality, man. He, he, is a, he is a guy who turns into a running back when he catches the football. He's tough. You're not going to take him down with, with the first tackle. If you do, then you are a very lucky human being. Now, he ran the same type of speed. He ran a 4 6 one at, at the combine, just like Keon Coleman. But I'm telling you right now, this dude is a very, very dangerous wide, um, wide receiver slash tight end. Like, <laughs> he, is, he is that good. Like, if you look at the offense that was set up and the way that they actually used him, he, he actually was used a little bit like you would use a wide receiver. He's that talented. Now, they got him projected as a fifth-round pick. So I don't know what I don't know why he had a pretty decent senior bowl campaign. I don't know if it was some things that happened at the combine. Maybe, you know, they're the reason why they decided to put him as a fifth round pick. But if he's there in the fifth round, that would be a really good addition for the New Orleans Saints. Very, very talented guy. Very, very physical guy. Definitely would be the, the, the guy that I would have on my radar. Another guy that I think would be, you know, available. Make sure I let me go ahead and go to the next page. Make sure that it is here. This is one of those late round guys. If the Saints probably, you know, go after them, maybe like in a, in a fifth round or something like that. Uh, pretty, you know what I'm saying? Pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? Like pretty decent pass catcher, red zone, uh, you know, type guy. And that's Devin Cope. Okay, Devin Cope. Uh, out of the University of Washington, really was on my radar when I saw him, uh, you know, play this season. Like, very, very talented dude. Uh, probably, you know what I'm saying, need a little work. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people think, you know what I'm saying, like, okay, he, he's a, you know, going to be undrafted, but I don't think so. I think he, you know what I'm saying, I think he is a guy that you can probably work with. He's one of those guys that, not going to be your top guy, right? Well, I'm talking about like later on or something. If the Saints want to decide to like maybe draft him with one of the later picks, he will probably be a really good fit. Uh, if you got Juwan Johnson, you got Foster Morrow, you you can be straight at the tight end position. If you decide, I don't know, maybe you want to move on from Morrow. Round year, year two, Colt can actually come in and actually provide that particular spark for you. Good red zone guy. Good first down guy, good target in the middle of the field, uh, be able to move the chains. I, I think that would be a good pick for the New Orleans Saints in, in one of the later rounds, okay? But, you know, Jaheim Bell will be my top guy, you know, if you're going to try to get a tight end or a pass catcher that you feel like can be a part of your rotation in the fifth round. Colt would probably be one of those guys that if you draft him, he'll probably pay dividends for you probably in year two. But I like what I saw out of him. He's definitely talented. Um, and But, you know, I think he's kind of like a work in progress. Uh, let me see. Ben Sinat, uh is the third best tight end, in my opinion. Uh, he's the best blocker and best uh, athlete in a class. Yeah, you know, you know, he reminds me. He reminds me a little of Dalton Kincaid. Like, you know, Dalton Kincaid uh, came out of Utah, uh, plays for the Buffalo Bills. Kind of reminds me of that, you know. Not not afraid, not afraid to go on those uh those uh missions. You know what I'm saying? Where you're in the middle of the field, he's not afraid to like catch that tough catch. Uh, guy, you know, he, he's a tough guy. You know, like I know some people may, uh, you know, he he reminds me a little bit of Benjamin Watson as well, like the talent and the skill set as well with the athleticism. So, yeah, I, I like him, man. He, I like Kay Stover too. Kay Stover, I feel like it gets a little bit of the edge because of the games that he's been in. Uh, the fact that he's been in the limelight and the public eye for since he's been at Ohio State. Had a really good season last year. Pretty solid for a tight end. So I think that he'll probably get the edge over uh, Sonat, even though Sonat is uh, really, really talented. Really talented, man. Uh, he, he's a first-day starter, no doubt about that. 
Uh, Jawan Taylor, I think Chiefs uh, have a good O line. You crazy? Uh, yeah. I mean, what you talking about, Jawan Taylor with the right tackle? I mean, even when he, he struggled, I mean, he better than what they had before. I mean, Jawan Taylor is pretty is pretty good offensive line. If we talking about the the right tackle, I mean, he had some issues, but I mean, he's still pretty solid. Better than what the anybody on the Saints line right now. Uh, let's see who is the Chiefs left tackle. Uh, nobody. Who they had Donovan Smith, if I ain't mistaken. Uh, Donovan Smith, but he can hold up. That's all we need is someone decent. So I, I say draft Bauer. Rashad, let me let me tell you something, man. Um, look, I understand where you're coming from, but there's this one guy that's out there. He wears number 15, and uh, he's won what three Super Bowls, and he's like really really talented. I can't think of this guy's name. He's light skinned. Uh, he got like a mohawk cut. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Patrick Mahomes, right? Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. So it, is, it, it suffice to say that they're going to be all right regardless of who on, on the left side. We've we seen plug and play over the last couple of years with the Kansas City Chiefs. And somehow, some way, they still managed to make it to the Super Bowl because that light-skinned boy from Texas is pretty damn good. So to, to compare Patrick Mahomes – I mean, the, the, the offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes as their quarterback to the offensive line of the New Orleans Saints and Derek Carr as the quarterback. I mean, it's like apples and oranges. Matter, matter of fact, it's like apples and apricots here. It's like apples and kiwis here, okay? I mean, it, it is it is way out there. Better yet, it's not even on the same – it's not even – it's like a fruit in a block. I don't know. Whatever it is. They, they got an advantage having Patrick Mahomes as their quarterback. The Saints, for what you see, Rashad, and like I said, this is your opinion, and I value that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to shy you away from it. I'm pretty sure I haven't because that's how you feel. But we've seen Derek Carr get happy feet when he doesn't have a really good pocket. We've seen Patrick Mahomes have really bad pockets and still manage to get the ball down the field or escape and get 10, 15 yards and hit his head on the goalpost. So I just feel like it's kind of like night and day. You know, they have a real they they have an average offensive line, but they have an extraordinary quarterback. So we and, and a part of me, I, I don't feel like I I don't feel like I'm out of line saying this. A part of me feels like the offensive line has always been average or below average, but the Saints had Drew Brees throughout the year, so he made them look better than what they were. Because we all know that sometimes. Drew and, and Drew made a, a name for himself when he's under the rest and they have a defender like going at him or try to tackle him, he'll throw the ball away. Well, if he throws the ball away, it's an incompletion. But he still got pressure on him. But of course, like it's gonna look on a stat sheet as if he didn't get set. So a lot of times, you know, these quarterbacks, they kind of make these offensive linemen look better and offensive lines look better than what they actually are. So at the end of the day, Patrick Mahomes is uh, their quarterback. So to me, you don't have that luxury. Now, if Patrick Mahomes was the quarterback of the Saints, I would say draft Brock Bowers, right? But they need help. Like they need help. If you know Derek Carr is, is he has happy feet. If you get anywhere near him, like he he gonna he gonna get that he gonna make a erratic decision or he gonna take that sack. Cause he, he, cause he don't, he ain't gonna feel like he have time. Uh, it's tough, TJ. Cause in my personal opinion, our O line uh, wasn't that bad. Till Carr got behind it, I think the quarterback is responsible as well as pocket awareness, uh, getting ball out quick, reading blitz and defense. James, I mean that's a good point. That's a good point right there. You know, and it, it goes back to, uh, you know, um, the point that Rashad was trying to make too. You know, I can understand like the whole you know, offensive line and the quarterback and and also, you know, why you would want to get Brock Bowers. You know, like Brock Bowers is a talent. Like that's another pass catching uh target that that Derek Carr can have at his disposal. I, I get it. But I just feel like the offensive line, this team needs a really good offensive line. Like I feel like some teams would probably get away with mediocre offensive line talent if you have a quarterback back there that can kind of 
make them look better than what they are. But I don't think that Derek Carr can do that. I think that Derek Carr relies heavily on the offensive line to do their job. And more often than not, he's not going to really help them out. So when you have that type of quarterback, it, it, you know, you need offensive line to be able to hold hold up. I think oh, with better quarterback play, I already read. Did I already read that? No, it's, no I don't think I read it. I think with better quarterback play, uh, O-line would look better. And you said what I was thinking. Uh, I ain't uh, going to sound biased or redundant, but I think quarterback is what we need. Uh, don't want to uh, waste another season. Yeah, I do think they need a quarterback, but we know, James, they're not going to do that because they believe in Derek Carr. And uh, you pay them that money, you know, to play the quarterback position. So they're going to try to put things around him, just like they try to put things around Dennis Allen. They want him to work. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're so far from being a player or two away. I just hope that we draft people that will be above average starters for four to seven years at any position. I have no faith in an early round offensive line player, no offense. Well, that's that's the reason why you got Clint Kubiak coming in, Lewis, to try to change that narrative and change the way that you're thinking right now. And hopefully he can. Hopefully he can bring a little bit of swag to this New Orleans Saints offense, something that's been lacking for the last couple of years. And they can get back on track because I think that's what all Saints fans want, if I'm not mistaken, right? We all want them to be the best they can possibly be. So this is an offense uh, that is historically uh, a really hard offense to stop. And if Clint Kubiak can get the ball rolling and have the Saints offense as a well-oiled machine, they got the talent to do it. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of if they can get this thing done. Uh, I'm going to take a – I'm going to read a few more comments, then we're going to go ahead and get up out of here, man. I uh, got a Bible study tonight. It says, uh, if we can get the elite playmakers by for the future and he can make uh, our offense uh, explode, I feel like we should go after that. Well, Ty, you know, that, I mean, that's another person. You know, so it seems like a lot of people in the chat are leaning towards the Saints going after Brock Bowers, which, look, so many different needs for this team. I can understand why anybody, you know, w you know, would say get a tight end, get an offensive line, you know, get a wide receiver. Like there's so many different needs, so you can't get mad at them no matter what they select. But to me, I just feel like they need an offensive line. They need an offensive line. Uh, let's see, bringing our saints to Bible study because our team needs prayer. <laughs> Lord, please protect our team. <laughs> Have them win 10 games. <laughs> but now, nah, all, all jokes aside, man, you know, like, whatever they, whatever they decide to do would be a step up. Um, they're not one or two players away, um, like you alluded to, Lewis. They're, they're not. Um some people feel, and I, man, I've I've heard this quite a bit from some very well respected individuals that we watch on television all the time behind the scenes, and I, they've said to me, the Saints aren't going to win anything until they get rid of Dennis Allen. That that's what they said. Okay, uh, look, so that that is that is popular opinion, whether people want to present it or not, but. We just got to figure this thing out, okay? Hopefully, hopefully they can get better by drafting better. You know, doing their due diligence. You had Mickey and, and Dennis Allen down in Baton Rouge uh, for the pro day. I, I don't know, man. We we know that um, throughout the years when Sean Payton was the coach, he, he did not. I don't even. Did, did Sean Payton ever go to LSU to go to Baton Rouge for a pro day? I, I don't think I can remember. Maybe he did. I'm pretty sure throughout the years, the 15 years he was coaching the team, I'm pretty sure he went to Baton Rouge once or twice. But when, you know, who knows? You know, like they they out here. They out here. They requesting visits. They go and visit uh, players. So, you know, they, they're trying to do their best. So hopefully their best is good enough, at least to win nine to ten games and get into the postseason. Bro, if they draft uh, Bowers, I'd be furious. He can't catch deep, doesn't catch intermediate. Uh, he's essentially a short pass catching back. Uh, we don't even use Alvin Wright for that role. 
Well, Scott, here's the thing. And I, I get your thoughts and your feelings and your views about that, but we also have to take into account, Scott, that this is a new offense that they run. So I think you honestly have to eliminate some of the things that, that you have grown accustomed to seeing offensively because and, – and look, when you're used to a certain type of way, a certain type of style throughout the years, it becomes like embedded in, into your mind. So when you look at certain players and you see them doing certain things, it's like, man, uh, you know, any coordinator that comes in, you like, okay, we got this, we got that. But you have to ask yourself, Scout, and, uh, and I could be wrong about this, but you have to ask yourself, is it the player or the system? And if you bring in another system, would that system fit that said player? For example, with Brock Bowers, I definitely agree with you. A lot of short intermediate passes, Scout. But if you look at the type of offense that the 49ers run and what Clint Kubiak is bringing to the, the Saints, there are a lot of short intermediate passes. So his skill set could be what the Saints need to be able to be able to conduct and perform their newfound offense. Now, if this was probably, you know, P. Carmichael calling plays, we see that there's very little usage of the tight end. So I can understand why would you waste your time. But we see it in this offense, and we see how when you use this offense, they, they rely a lot on a tight end position. And a, and a lot for him to be able to catch those short and immediate passes and get up the field, which Brock Bowers can do. So with that, it will probably work out. So I'm just asking everybody. Like, I, I get it. I understand. But we got to be careful here. We got to be careful to not get sucked into the Saints' way offensively. And some of us, it's very, very hard because we grew up with the Saints' offense and what they've been running throughout the years. So – we, we see what it consists of. So some, for, to some of us, this is the first time we're actually seeing a different Saints offense as far as we can remember. So we got to suspend our imagination here. We got Well, I won't say suspend our imagination, but we got to eliminate what we already know and kind of get programmed to something that's a little bit different. It's almost like an OG trying to learn a computer. You know what I'm saying? Like, not you, Jerry. But I'm talking about a person that's not very tech, technically savvy, right? It probably take them some time to kind of get used to. They'll probably moan and groan a little bit. But guess what? It, you, you know, it's, it's something new. So the Brock Bowers way probably didn't work with a Pete Carmichael's offense. But his skill set right now and what he what he has done at the University of Georgia, it definitely would fit with this type of offense that Clint Kubiak uh, would be running in New Orleans. And I'm interested to see also, I'm interested to see like how this is going to work from a wide receiver perspective, because these guys are going to have to learn how to block. They're going to have to learn how to like really get upfield. Cause a lot of what that offense consists of is getting that yak. If you, if you pay attention, Debo Samuels has the capability of getting yards after the catch. George Kittle has the ability. Brandon Ayuk has the ability. Christian McCaffrey has the ability. You know, like, if if you look at, you know, that offense, most of the time in that offense, they have skilled players that have the ability to get that yak. Turn two or three yards into 23, 33 yards. Or even, you know what I'm saying, a, a big long run. So, should be interesting to see how the Saints – offense is going to be able to adjust to that uh bowers don't need to catch anything deep uh that's not his game and understand uh georgia was run first regardless the offense wasn't built to send bowers deep nah it, it wasn't it wasn't and, it, and like i said that's the reason why it would fit because that's that's the offense that the saints are, are going to be running so look i can understand that but this is a new offense that we're talking about i definitely agree if this was p carmichael like don't waste your time because he's just going to be being wasted and they're just going to use him as a blocker. 
Uh, if you draft Bowers, you immediately trade in uh, picks to get an old line. All the top offensive tackles probably will be gone by pick 45. I agree with that. So that's something that you have to look at too. You know, is Brock Bowers worth it? Is he is he worth, you know, not getting the offensive line at 14? I like Brock Bowers, and this might be one of the most ridiculous statements in the history of the State of the Saints podcast if you probably fast forward. I mean, you rewind this about three, four years later, but right now I just feel like the offensive line is, is the top priority. You know, and that's just the way that I feel. Uh, but I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Really do appreciate it. Much love to you. I ask that you subscribe to the channel, youtube.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, you can check out previous episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM. Also check out Gumbo Pie Sports Podcast on YouTube. Follow the Gumbo Pie Sports Podcast on Facebook. Uh, did I say follow me on X at TJAY Jones 8? If I didn't, follow me on X at TJAY Jones 8. Also, check out the Unapologetic Podcast uh, that is going to be uh, every it's every Thursday. Uh, we got a new episode that's coming at you on tomorrow. We got to talk about P. Diddy, folks. We got to talk about P. Diddy on, on, on the episode of the Unapologetic Podcast. We're going to be talking about Diddy and, uh, you know, everything that's going on with that. So it's not a sports podcast. It's kind of like a life pop culture podcast. So if you're into that type of stuff, Look it up, youtube.com, search Unapologetic Podcast, subscribe to that channel. Yeah, man, a lot of content coming your way, man. Uh, different different uh, nuances of uh, me as a podcaster. And, and shouts out to everybody that, that supports the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, you know, I, I, I love what I do, love podcasting, love broadcasting, love interactions. And uh, hopefully, you know, like if, if this is your first time checking out the podcast, you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Have a good morning, noon, night, whenever you're checking out this podcast. Like always, all I got to say is, who that? Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs>